when we talk about vigilante, it's about people who have taken the law into their own hands. And well, say that we are turning law and order upside down. I, I get and then, you see, I get where you're coming so we, we, we are not looking at we are not looking at vigilantism from any positive I, I agree direction. With you. But, but I'll, I'll come I you. also want to ask to hasten slowly in what? by going and describing people as party militia and, and all those things. I think that I think that I, th I think that party militia. I, I think that they what armed. I think that you know, How would you for, describe for, for, for instance, for, 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 for instance, for instance, for instance, for instance, all the groups that congregated in front of the NDC office, mm -hmm. if they were armed, the narrative would have been different. That's true. The narrative, listen, listen, the narrative, somebody armed himself, moved into their midst, shot at them, and then ran away. And you are saying that these are people who are armed. Yeah, but those if they were armed. If they were armed, really, they would not have been there for somebody to use pistols so to you, come you, and you, kill people. You disagree and go. with the description party malicious? Well, I think that we should hasten slowly because I don't think that we have gotten to no, because that we, point. We, we do not. We, we no longer we, want to make see, it an attractive proposition. Well, whatever, you, you, what, you, you, what, you, whatever it takes, it's not an attraction. You see, your reaction to party malicious. You see, you see, how you see, whatever, whatever it is, dangerous. Whatever it is, whatever it is. I, as an individual, mm. I want to say that I will never encourage vigilantism or militia or whatever or you call you it. You see, Professor Kofi Aono, may he so rest in peace, never knew that an internal insurgency in Nairobi, Kenya, will be where he will meet his untimely death. What happened in Kumasi could have happened to any of us. If that person who came with a premeditated, premeditated, you know, act to come and kill, it could have been me. It could have been anybody. Yeah. So we, we need to collectively stand up against this, you know, development, which for me is not good for the body politics of this country. I've asked the leadership of the MPP to extend an invitation to the leaders, to the leadership of the NDC for such a meeting. The security services of the country will be on standby to assist this meeting. If voluntary disbandment by the parties is not feasible, then I will initiate legislation in the matter. Vigorous debate, vigorous debate, and the exchange of ideas should be the true basis of political dialogue and competition in our country, not the activities of party vigilante groups. Right, so you're welcome back. And you just heard uh, Samuel Fusampa, for national chairman of the NDC and the president, Nana Dodankwa Kofuado. So, Prof, the solutions that they seek to proffer, and particularly what the president is seeking to do, you know, a two-tier approach. If one works, good. If the other doesn't, then I escalate it to legislation. Is that the way to go? I, well, I think that the, you know, the points that we've made so far here, I think, one can sum it up this way, that it is important to have the right diagnosis of the problem in order to be get the right prescription. And when, uh, you know, listening to the Honorable Minister of Information's uh, very important and very eloquent intervention, one gets, I mean, there's one important point that we must make, is that vigilance by citizens in a democracy is a culturally and sociable um, and socially acceptable practice. In fact, it is it is part and parcel of good citizenship. So, this is where it begins, right? So, vigilance itself mm. is something that should be encouraged. Mm. Um, citizens must protect the ballot. Um, parties must protect the ballot uh, on election day. They must be vigilant. They must send people, you know, there to make sure that the right thing is done. So as we, we move towards a solution, mm. we must disaggregate this whole thing and see which ones we must preserve and encourage 
which parts we must, uh, we, we must deal with, and the like. So it is vigilance that then has taken on a criminal dimension. So the vigilance itself must be protected and encouraged. The criminal dimension, as, as Dennis said, is what we haven't dealt with for a number of reasons. And then the criminal dimension has taken on a political dimension now. As Kojo and, in fact, his boss, the president, admit, a bipartisan political dimension. And that is what has, in a sense, also complicated the, the solution to the criminal problem. Because it has taken on a political dimension, it has become difficult to deal with. Otherwise, ordinarily, one should ask, this is a law enforcement problem. If we have not exhausted the law enforcement solutions, why are we moving on to a political solution? As if to say that we are totally helpless in dealing with this as a criminal problem. And having therefore reached a dead end in terms of finding a law enforcement remedy for this, we must now resort to a political solution. So what the president is offering, I think it's, it's a political solution um, to a problem that to an issue that has taken on a criminal dimension. Mm. Now, I think that's fine, but there is also, and I agree with Dennis, that we must also call things by their proper name. This is a criminal problem, right? Vigilance is good. When it takes on a criminal dimension, it's a criminal problem. It must be dealt with as such. Unfortunately, we have allowed it to fester for so long that now it has become embedded in our politics and it's become embraced by both parties and therefore we must find a solution to it. Yeah. Now I, I think that I agree with Kojo that regardless of where this problem began, who did it, who started it, that this moment, you know, and the call by the president is, a, is an important and game-changing one and hopefully would be a turning point. I, I do not think that we can get to the solution through moral suasion. This is not an appeal to the parties to drop your guns and that kind of stuff, right? But he's offering an opportunity. Come, let's sit and discuss the problem. Mm. The solution has become complicated. Ordinarily, I'll say, yeah, just send the police after them, send the security forces after them. But the, that solution has become a bit complicated now. Mm because it involves politics and politicians and th these people have become embedded in the system. So I welcome this uh, dialogue mm. process, right? I welcome this dialogue process, but I think that we must keep in reserve at all times the law enf enforcement option, that this is, this is fundamentally mm. become a law enforcement problem, okay. and we should not disable the law enforcement apparatus from working and turn this into a totally political problem. There, okay. There's a law enforcement direction. There are those who suggest that, that there really may be <clears throat> the need for some, some laws, even if it is an addition. Mm -hmm. But there are those who, who criticize the president and say, you don't need any new laws. The laws are already there. Like you just said, it's about enforcing the law. Well, but and, the president, and, we don't know what new legislation is right. talking about. And, and right? Ace, Ace and Kuma, for example, has mm -hmm. been popularizing, mm -hmm. you know, the amendment section 200 and 200A mm -hmm. of the Criminal Offences Act, which says, uh, which clearly prohibits organized criminal groups. Mm -hmm. And it says that um, a person who participates in an activity of an organized criminal group commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a maximum penalty of death. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how else can you enhance this any further? A maximum penalty of death and to a minimum penalty of not less than five years imprisonment. Two, an organized criminal group is a structured group acting in concert with the aim of committing a serious offense. For the purposes of this act, that's three. A serious offense means an offense for which the maximum penalty is death and the, and the minimum penalty is imprisonment for a period not less than five years. And B, structured group consists of two or more persons that is not randomly formed, mm -hmm. not randomly formed mm -hmm. for the commission of an offense and in which the members may or may not have defined roles.
continuity of membership or which may or may not have a developed structure. So this is where people get to and say, what's the president talking about? What law do we need again? They are going about committing crimes. And if they are committing them in groups, then they are captured under this law. Mm -hmm. And they'll be punished by either five years or a death penalty. <laughs> well, um, fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of... Uh, one, my, my good friend, Professor Sari, will say these are uh, one of those situations where you say, oh, all these fine suggestions have been on our books <laughs> and uh, we haven't really... Suggestions. Uh, ...apparently <laughs> found use for them. But it is possible. It's entirely possible. I don't know what's on the president's mind. He's been attorney general before. I'm sure he knows what's in our laws and still thinks that uh, there, there might be uh, a gap here that needs to, 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 uh, to be filled with new legislation. If what he's contemplating, for example, is that the political role in this must be dealt with, which is one possibility. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I made a comment of that kind on... Uh, on the wall of my, my good friend Franklin Kujo, yeah. that it is it is entirely like uh, uh, it's entirely likely that yeah. this is what is in the president's contemplation, that, for example, you could say you know at all elections, security will be provided except for your party agent. Mm -hmm. No party will be allowed to bring anybody at all right. in the immediate vicinity of the who who would act as security for the party mm -hmm. or a ballot protection force. Right? You could do something of the sort. Well, in one which of case, the members of the commission, the former it, IGP, made that suggestion too. Yeah, in which case, the, I mean, essentially, it goes beyond this. Right? They, they are not necessarily engaged in criminality, but it is the kind of force that uh, could also trigger a response from the other side and then lead, one thing leads to the other thing and then it mm. escalates into violence. Okay. So the president may well be looking at uh, essentially a law that says, we will take care. I mean, fine, if you want to give us a subsidy, mm. right, essentially, if you guys protect yourselves, it's a subsidy to the state. Okay. You know? yeah. Our resources are thing, so we're happy that you are doing your ballot protection. But because of the danger that that uh, uh, gives rise to, we will no longer allow you to even do that. Okay. We will actually take on that task mm. and provide security across board, all elections, party, no security. Okay. So that may well be the new legislation. Right. Otherwise, mm. I also fail to see uh, why the existing laws cannot reach the criminality. Thank you very much. And, and, and Kojo is itching to talk, but you see, I, I'm doing this so that because you are the man in, in government, no, <laughs> you get the opportunity, no, it's fine, it's fine, you get the opportunity to respond to, to, respond to, to the yeah, matters that they may raise. Now, Dennis, we, is it not possible yeah. that the other leg of the president's suggestion yeah. about legislation yeah will include the legislation that we have all been talking about as a big hindrance. These violence mainly are committed during elections. Yeah. And when the violence is committed in elections, it is an election offense. Mm -hmm. And the election offense must be prosecuted by the police, mm -hmm. but with the express written mm -hmm. consent of the attorney general. That's the law. Mm -hmm. Could it not mean that he wants to change that law that says you need the Attorney General's express written consent to prosecute? Because we know mm -hmm. that that's one of the reasons these things never get prosecuted. Um, Samson, I, I, I think nothing prevents the President, to, to the help of Parliament, from initiating a law that will seek to encompass all facets of election violence and possibly raise that standard where it becomes a electoral offense which you need special permission to commit. Now, the, the issue that you have to look at is where the president decides to make it alternative. Say that if you don't come together and solve the problem, I am going to pass a legislation to deal with the problem. I, think, I don't think that it should be an alternative. Nothing prevents the president from still proceeding or ensuring that we have a major legislation which deals with all matters of election violence. You sincerely think there is need for a federal legislation? And, I'm, and that uh, the current legislation, legislative regime is inadequate? The, the, issue, the beauty of Ghana is more revealed in the legislations that we have, more than the structures that you see. Prof. and his so, friends say suggestions. <laughs> so, so, although, remember, the more that the president might want to go that route, it's understandable because remember that in terms of criminal offenses, the burden of proof is beyond all reasonable doubt. You need to bring evidence that will lead to one irresistible conclusion that an offense has been committed. So the offense that is raised, which you discussed, for me, any prosecutor who decides to go that route is going to have serious challenges from being able to bring evidence that this is an organized group who have formed for a criminal purpose. 
as against the right of association that the person might have. So, so it's better you have, might have a criminal law which might say, make certain, certain things like strict liability. Mm -hmm. If you, apart from you being an agent, if you are found within the vicinity of an election area, it's an offense, it might be a misdemeanor. So that one becomes easy for you to pick a person. So maybe that might be more reason why maybe legislations, which maybe after this commission recommendation will come, will look at the extent and totality of it and Can realize you imagine that... imagine where the evidence exists? And here, I'm talking about ocular proof. Yes. And then we prosecuted one such. Yes. The deterrence it would engender. But have you yeah. ever heard that we have activated this law? It's been on our books since when? And I'm saying that for, for me, this one is even a higher law. Mm. For me, if my, we realize oh, in terms of, in terms of op options that a person might have, we are just not willing to deal and enforce the law. And I'll give you a practical example. We amended the Constitution and made, in terms of who becomes the chairman of the uh, police council, okay, if I'm be appointed by the president, the previous Constitution period before the amendment was the vice president. But I cannot tell you that even though that amendment was passed, Years or countless years, every time we maintain the vice president to be the head of uh, the police council, although the president has an option by law to choose any chairman who he thinks might have, but by the practice of it, we are still maintaining the vice president to be a chairman of the security council. There are issues in terms of bigger issues in terms of how we people are recruited into the system. So for us here, looking at this issue, it's an issue of enforcement. Okay. We are not just willing to enforce the law. Mm -hmm. And if we are not willing to enforce the law, these matters will go on. Because there are do instances... You think, do you think the parties will sit like they are seeking to suggest? I, I think that they'll, they'll sit. If you look at the language that the chairman of the opposition has made, he's willing to sit. And remember that gradually... We Ghanaians are dictating what we think is nationalistic for the politicians. All right. If it has been political, I don't think that the president might have formed this commission. <laughs> because if the president had gone for political expediency, you look at the situation, these are things that was perceived to have been committed by his people, but it still went ahead because Ghanaians called for it, that we need to investigate that like, It has gone far too long, and the president cannot decide to share with as has been previously been done. So there's a gradual level of freedom of speech where people are now shaping how the political characters will deal with the matters. Mm. And that's okay. one reason why I don't think that the president mm. uh, can decide to sweep this under the carpet. Mm. And I don't also think that the president should make it an alternative. Okay. If we think the laws are not enough to deal with it, especially after the commission's report, we'll seek to know the loopholes within the system and look at how the, you know, the law has not covered certain areas. Let us deal with it. But for now, mm. some of the major criminal offenses can be dealt with. And do, okay. not, do not forget that when it comes to offenses, it might be one singular act, but we can charge you for over 100 offenses. That's so true. long as the, the nature of the act fits the various offenses. So there's nothing like plurality of offenses mm -hmm. barring us from prosecuting people. Okay. But the standard is that are we willing to enforce it? Thank you. Martin, the mm -hmm. solutions, are they solutions workable, lasting? Yes. So that's specifically the dialogue that the president is called for, right? Yes, yes. yes. As I mentioned earlier, is the first step. It's necessary because we cannot wait for the commission to finish before we begin the dialogue. So let's do them simultaneously, OK? And as I've stated earlier, because the NDC has also embraced it, it's good. And you see, I, I, as I always say, we should be guided a bit by history. This is not the first time. I have here Liman, when he took over, page, let me read something. Mm. On matters of security, he mm. created an inter-party consultative committee. And this is Ivan Diamond, right? Yes, uh -huh. mm. this book. Uh, Hila Lehman, yeah. a biography. That's the one written by uh, Professor Dimensa. So he said, Lehman created an inter-party consultative committee to deal with matters of security. So I'm reading at page 374. You say, initially it worked, but it, it eventually it failed because the parties wanted to take political advantage. You know, once there were mistakes, you know, each party, just like we have it now, each party would want to use that, do those mistakes to gain political mileage. But the point, the upshot of my uh, point is that this is not the first time in history that we are uh, looking at security matters from this perspective, that mm. the political parties mm. should come together. No. Okay. So we should encourage it uh, with all the uh, resources that we can master. Mm. Okay. Okay. But that apart, let me make this last point. You see, the issue of the composition, so, you know, issues have been raised as to whether maybe they will need experts, they will need mediators and the rest. I yeah. think that one too, we should look at it. Because the two parties alone, that will not be sufficient. You know, civil society, CDD, the civil, civic initiative forum, and especially Dr. Akwiti. You remember in 2008, 
2012, the Mencia declaration, he yeah. played a very pivotal Idec. role. Mm -hmm. Idec. Yes, yeah, so I think they should bring him on, bring other uh, Professor Prempe's organizations, get more people on board, because these people represent us the non-aligned ones, you mm -hmm. see, so we don't want to let the political parties talk. The suspicion is that the parties alone, they won't make progress. Very good, very good, that is the point. So the civil society should represent us, because we mm -hmm. are also uh, a very critical part of the population, of course. Before we an, said an aspect it. of the suggestion has been that um, you may need to integrate these people into the into mm. the you know uh, yeah. normal security because or find some jobs for them. What do you say? Yes, jobs for them, but the normal security yeah. it appears. As I you remember, I stated earlier that the ones who have their hands tainted with violence. No, we don't want them near our security. Uh, and but you want what kind of job for them? <laughs> you want yes. to take it upon yourself to find a job for them? Yes, for those that have, that's the 24. Otherwise, then the question would then be, can I remember, we already have a larger problem of youth unemployment. So let's say that those 24 groups that Dr. Pesian uh, identified, we should get those train it because there must be a cut-off point. Otherwise, mm. then we are dealing with the so larger people youth. people who, who are not finding jobs will decide to come together and, and, and use that as a platform to get uh, recognized and get jobs. Hopefully, we will not get there because we've started the dialogue. So it means that we are stopping them no more. The militancy, okay. so remember, we keep saying that it's a militant aspect, the violent aspect of okay. the vigilantism that right. we are curing. And, 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 and yeah, you want something to say something, yeah, the question uh, of what, integration. What, 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 mm. what, I, what I want to say is, is an instance where it, it, it brings up the, the bigger picture of the standard of recruitment into our security agencies, okay, which has led to a lot of mistrust with the, uh, their instances. Should it be the responsibility of the state to find them jobs if it's seeking to resolve this problem? Why not? But asking whether or not they should be integrated into a security system you should disagree. be determined. Should be determined. Should be determined on the basis of whether or not they qualify from the objective criteria that has been laid out. Okay. So, if, for instance, in terms of, because remember that even within the police service, for you to go to a particular unit, you might have a certain. You need to have a certain, okay. you know, physique before you can put in a certain unit. Briefly on that prop, then I go yeah, to I think, I think yeah. as the narrative has evolved, it is clear that part of what uh, the problem is here. Uh, is a certain mistrust of the security services yeah. that emerges from this sense that it's been infiltrated deliberately by partisans of one or the other party. Mm. If that is part of the disease, <laughs> then I think that we should hasten very slowly in trying to make that part of the cure, right? So, so that the disease... Nonetheless, the state should take that responsibility, finding them alternative jobs. Well, the state actually is responsible for creating an environment where jobs, citizens generally can find jobs and apply Galancy, themselves. We are finding alternative jobs for... Fine. What I'm people. saying is that yeah. part of the problem that we're faced with is the nature of recruitment okay. into yeah. our security service and what it has become. All right. It has become mm. protocol mm. as opposed to open, competitive meritocratic recruitment. Mm. We've gotten to a point where parties do not trust the recruitment yeah. done by the other party. And right. if you are not going to say that because of this, let us borrow this idea from you know, the, the, the warlord's uh, uh, system where after a war, part of the peacemaking is we demobilize the troops from both sides and integrate them to form a new national army. That okay. is not necessarily yeah. the model that I think uh, works here. Okay. But again, I'm open-minded in terms of solutions. This is both a criminal and a political solution. We must uh, look at all options, but I really, really would be very worried okay. if we moved now in the direction of trying to legitimize okay. what has become part of the problem. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, your reference to Warlord uh, takes me back to Henrietta Mensa Bones, who's, uh, you know, uh, proposition to, to militia and warlordism. And I seem to have gathered from her that she was seeking to project them in a manner that even if we can't punish them locally, we may be able to punish them internationally. <laughs> That's the way I was thinking about it. But again, Prof was referring to the right of citizens to you know, do work that is almost vigilante, mm -hmm. the proper word, you know, mm -hmm. because Martin Amidu has, for example, been praised for doing uh, citizen well, vigilance. vigilante. Vigilance. Right. As you, as you mentioned that, I looked at uh, Article 41, 41F, yeah, more particularly, the, yeah. where mm -hmm. it says that the citizen has a duty um, to protect and preserve public property and expose and combat misuse and waste of public funds yeah. and property, yeah. among others. Um, 
Okay, so <laughs> nice constitution, a nice cover, but the constitution appears to have suffered in your hands. <laughs> now, could you? We have heard, for example, your party chairman say that what the group had done earlier, soon after you had won power, was doing Article 41F job. How are you going to have people like these leaders change the narrative and agree to a resolution, a disbandment? Leadership is course. Everything else is effect. Today we are sitting around the table, and though I may disagree with some of the solutions being proffered, I am thrilled at the fact that today, here on Newsfile, we are talking solutions to a problem that has been there for decades. And on the lighter side, while you say that is because you know the citizens are calling for it, we 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 once had a system that said in Tubia, <laughs> didn't matter what citizens were saying. But on a more serious yes. note, and I think that it's something we shouldn't just cast away. There, there, there's there is something that is happening. When we voted for change in 2016, we wanted to change the way some things were going on in this country. And part of what is happening is that you have leadership that is clear that without whose ox is God, these things must be dealt with. Now, when that leadership sounds the tune, that is when you have all the acolytes, et cetera, in the system following. So um, I'll say, again, for us in the media, et cetera, let's not even play up the one um, comment by, let me be a bit harsh, some fringe element here. That may sound exciting. Follow the leadership that we all want to see. We need to call them out. We need to expose them. We, yes, we can do that. You need to name them. We and can shame do that. Them. I agree mm -hmm. with that. But let's not mainstay their issues. And there are small comments on the side. Let us rather mainstay the issues that the leaders are putting there. Now, two specific matters. One is just a little comment on this um, clause three C in yes. the um, IOWA. And I'm happy that um, uh, Lawyer Bochi makes the point that to the extent that an application is brought to the commission that seeks to ask the commission to look into a matter that is reasonably proximate to the IRS world. So for example, if somebody went and said or petitioned or applied to the commission and said that, listen, I think that Tripony or Talency or Etiwa or Aquetia X happened, and that is the trigger for this. I am of the view that the commission will want to examine whether or not that is. And it is in that context they that I think that, it, it, yes, it, it, it is, it is, yes. it is in that context that I think that the door is not entirely closed. Not as though they are looking into those who wants to prescribe sanctions for the persons, because that is not the yes. event, yes. like my senior says here. But it is a matter that they can examine. Not my substantive ma matter. We say that some of these are criminal matters. It should be dealt with as criminality. I agree with that view. Some of these are criminal elements. The law, uh, section 200 or so of yeah, uh, Act 179 mm -hmm. that you talked about, that is quoted, refers to criminal activity. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Refers course. to criminal activity. Mm -hmm. these, groups, know, group, these groups are ordinarily not formed for criminal activity. Yeah. And, and unfortunate as the incident that happened in Kumasi was, where the NDC leadership said that they had, had wind, that um, there was tension in their camps, and therefore they were going there to have a meeting with their people. And then at that meeting, you have some of their vigilante group members gather around the premises and tempest flare. And one draws a gun and guns down the other. The police have identified the persons and are on a manhunt for that person. Unfortunate and uh, uh, as criminal as it was. Minus that, is there any criminality today in even those gentlemen gathering around their party headquarters ostensibly to provide security for their party elite having a meeting? No. Because, you see, when these groups claim that they are there to provide security for their party people, these macho men, yeah. Budu and his pe people, when they get into assault, when they get to pull those guns are criminal and license matters. and those register, are criminal matters. when they shoot, they are committing those murder. Those are criminal yeah. matters. Mm. And those ones you have laws to deal with them today. But take a step back. If they are merely gathering, I go to a first year, just last weekend, we were there putting about 32 towns on the national grid. We finished around 10, 11 p.m. Ordinarily, when I go and I'm going around, I have young men in the party who are with me who say, oh, we'll go with you. I'm driving through the forest and bushes, etc." Today, today, I may be a, um, even though I don't have a police guard, today I may be a minister and maybe by virtue of that, I should be entitled to one. But ordinarily, take a politician who is not a minister of state, 
how is his security handled? And what is the guise under which people purport to do these things? So you find out that they come and say, oh, we are providing security for this. On election day, go back to election uh, 2008, for example. There's a documentary on it where you find former President Rawlings literally charging up the crowd. That on election day, don't go home. Stand by the ballot box. Guard the ballot box. Is that a crime? Guard it like you guard your mom. Is that a crime? Mm. So what the president is saying is that ordinarily, these are not illegal activities. Until they get to the level of criminality where you have assault and murder, etc. Those ones, there are laws to deal with them. And I agree with my senior totally. Enforcement is the way to go. Part of the problem has been that the police establishment over the decades, decades, has always been afraid. If you follow the testimony at the commission, they've always been afraid. Even when you tell the police people that arrest these people, whether or not they are my party people, arrest them. <laughs> they go back and they say, mm, as I mean, if you're on politician, <laughs> yes, we a problem. So they still will not act. But today you are noticing that you have a president who is willing to subject his ministers of security to a public inquiry to answer for their decisions and their conduct so that tomorrow everybody sees the level of Gathering professionalism. Gathering people, that feeding you them it. for the purposes of getting them to uh, the election to vote and all, it constitutes a crime exactly. of treating, for example. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever been punished mm -hmm. for that. Which one? Mm -hmm. Gathering people? Yes. yes. Here, and feeding them, giving them drinks, mere yes. drinks, yes, yes, yes. Fanta and Coke, yes. so that you get them ready to go to be, be in the process of voting. Those are the enforcement parts he's talking about. Yes. But I'm saying, what the president is saying, therefore, is that if it has to come to the level where even the legitimate things that these people purport to do now has to be proscribed by law, that as a politician, you are now hereby proscribed from um, 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 attempting to provide what they say they for do. yourself. Yes. Policing the ballot, yes. or as is way they say, monitoring the ballot, yes. whatever. Yes. It's already proscribed. Exactly. You, the, there's, the, look, there's a certain uh, perimeter. You cannot enter uh, the, the polling area to a, a certain. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a demarcation. Yes. You cannot you need go to beyond. enter the polling area. And yes. then party agents yes. mm -hmm. are accredited Samson. and are supposed to yes. be there. These guys Samson. behave like he they are rather the agents. But this is the point so I'm all of these things are prescribed. To, no, 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 no. There's a clear distinction. Okay. I'm, I'm not talking about somebody getting into the polling area. The gentleman sitting under the tree, w watching the county and counting with us, three, four, five, six, are not indulging in illegality. But there are things that we are beginning to notice, whip up the tensions and can lead to something else. Right. Let me take you to America, for example. Ordinary, there is not much wrong with me making a donation to... Uh, Martin Kibu Esquire for him to uh, participate in a program or to do something. Yeah. But it got to a time where the state realized that that was that legitimate exercise was now being used as a guise for people to buy politicians, mm -hmm. get them into office, cause them to do their bidding. And so when you are in extraordinary times, you go for extraordinary measures. They now have to rise up and go for proper political party financing laws, which seek to regulate what you can do and what you cannot even do with the money. Today, the president of America has been, among other things, investigated for how some of um, um, funds that were raised for his campaign were allegedly used as hash money uh, to pay somebody because they thought they had to. So what I'm saying is this. We're at a time where the president is not saying, uh, 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 you know, there's no option. There are several options. The security consultative group that met in Pediasi prescribed some options. Um, the commission going on at Ayawaso or on the, on the Ayawaso will prescribe some options. He's saying that in addition to that, the party should get around the table and explore the political solution. If he has and to the get to that level, has been doing some work in this if he has to get to that extra level. So I think that for me, the excitement is that we are having a confluence of ideas. Yeah. Let's push it. Let's find the solution. When he says that, I believe in Ghana, this is what he means. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. So with the president's belief in Ghana, uh, we emphasized we take a break, uh, we return to deal with other matters, particularly about your state of the nation. How exactly is your state of the nation different from that of the president, including 43 million US dollars for corporate social responsibility, double the amount that GMPC is going to spend for its core mandate? Is ASAP wrong by raising questions. We'll be right back.